What is up guys, it's Jay here, Jay Media One, and today we got another cool product to review, Steady Pro 4. And this is a splash proof 3-axis action camera gimbal, and it is for the GoPro. And we love the GoPro, and we think a lot of you do too, so we're just going to get right into the unboxing of this. GoPro has a lot of cool features. It has image stabilization, and it has an advanced image stabilization, which keeps the shakiness of it quite a bit down, but... To have a gimbal like this, you're going to only improve on that. And who wouldn't want a better shot? So that's why we're here. So we're going to give this thing a look. We're going to get straight into the unboxing. So let's go, guys. So it comes in a box just like this. Nothing too fancy. On the back there's some specs that says that the this does have wireless control, it's quick installation, it's got the IPX4, 14 hours of battery life, and it's got a built-in battery bank. And what does that mean for us? Well, ultimately, we can use this thing to power our GoPro and to charge it, which is just super cool. So we're going to slice into the top here without slicing our fingers off. Get this plastic off of here so we can get it out of the box. See, we pop this top here, slide it open, and it comes with a really nice case. Right off the bat, we noticed that. Nothing else inside of the box. This case is nice. You can see that it kind of conforms to the gimbal on the back side. It's got a zipper here, so we're going to open it up. Here we go. We got some reading material to tell us how to operate it all. And then we also have this uh, card here that's just kind of for quick actions, a quick start guide. If we don't want to go through the entire book and this book is thick which means this thing either has a whole lot of options or it's in like 13 different languages which is also possible so if we look inside the case we have all these different uh, cords and adapters so we have a micro usb we have a mini usb and we have a usb c which is cool and these are super short you can see that they have this rubber band around them but they're really really short they only go that far and that's probably going to be for the gimbal to the GoPro itself. And so here we have the actual gimbal. Let's get to this cord first. There's another USB-C here, a little bit longer. And then here we have a tripod stand that folds out. This is typical of gimbals because you can fold them back in like this and use them as a handle. They also unfold like this and you can use them as a tripod, kind of like that. And then here's the gimbal here. And it feels really good right off the bat. We have lots of gimbals, we use these things a lot. Here's an example of the gimbal that we reviewed about a year ago. And you can see that this DJI gimbal is just whooped. It is beat up and because we use them that much. So if you guys would like to see a video on this one, we will leave a link up above for that. But we're not here to talk about that one. That one's for phones. This one is specifically for the GoPro. It does have this strap on the front, which is supposed to be a little quick release here. You just remove that and then you can put your GoPro right inside of there so it's super quick and easy to get it installed. There is a button on the front here which says pair. There's a screw hole here so we can mount it there. There's also one at the bottom so it can be mounted that way which is kind of neat. You can mount it in this position if you like or you can mount it underneath. There's a little uh, thumb button underneath here or a trigger button in this case. There's also a thumb button on top. This will allow us to rotate it around and it's got a a little switch here as well, a recording button, and then a mode button. And then you can see up here that there's a Bluetooth indicator light. There's a couple different lights on this side, which say PF, PTF, L, and POV. So that's neat. This pops off here, and you can see DC out and DC in. So this is your output, and that is your input down there at the bottom. We're going to get the GoPro snapped inside of this. Like I said, it's just got this quick release here. So you see how nice it fits inside of there? And then this strap just comes up and around. And you can see that this little red part of it just kind of snipe, slides inside of there. So it fits it really nice. I mean, look at look at how clean that is. And that's holding it tight. I can't think of a better way to mount this thing because ultimately that's going to work just so well. This will be your uh, tripod stand, which we're going to leave it on there. 
just so we can show you guys how it kind of operates. Now, obviously we have to get this thing paired up and on so that it does work properly. So we're gonna have to turn this on. We have to charge the battery because this thing is completely dead. So we're gonna have to do that and we're gonna have to come back, guys. Okay, guys, we're back and we got it set up. There's a couple different things with this. While I still believe it's a very good gimbal, it does have some idiosyncrasies. The main one being right here. So your cord, in order for it to charge the GoPro while it's in the slot, it has to be in the this direction the gopro is not in this direction this orientation is flipped around this cord is going to touch the gimbal and that's bad news we can't have that because it won't fit in the slot there's one band on here which keeps it in that steady direction if you look right here you could see that the band that goes around it kind of goes right on the outside of the camera and right before the display which is good it's good positioning and it holds it in there very tight I have no complaints about that. These are retractable right here. You can see that right there. So that will go in and out, slide in and out. As well as you have this, which is retractable, this red part. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. So up here we have our pair button. That allows it to pair to the gimbal itself. So we need this to be paired to this in order for it to operate correctly. You do have some other really cool features. So one of them is that you have different selections and different modes here. So you can pan, tilt, zoom. You, can put, you have a point of view. You can change the modes very easily with this button here. This is your mode button. So if you see, if I click on that, it allows me to change what kind of mode it's in. Now you also have this rotate left, rotate right button, it's just a slider right there. So you could rotate those two directions as well. So you don't just have to turn it like this and rotate it around. You can go directly left or right. Now it does try to stay stable. It does try to track you. If you move this around, you can see that the camera is just staying exactly where the camera is supposed to stay. It's trying to stay perfectly still, and it does a really good job as far as that. This is the charging port. You can see that I have the cable plugged in here because I haven't really tested the battery life on it, and I don't need this thing to die mid-video. But uh, we have put a couple hours of charge on it. Now, keep in mind, this thing does have a pretty good battery life. It is meant to be able to charge the GoPro, so you don't always have to uh, worry about charging your GoPro separately from the gimbal. If you plan on leaving it inside of the gimbal, then you're going to be in good shape because as long as you're charging the gimbal, it's going to charge the GoPro. That is a very, very cool to me. As a matter of fact, if you look on the GoPro's display right here, it's really tiny, but you can see that the battery is charging. It's at 25% and going up right now. So that's very cool. It does have an output for a USB-A. If you look here on the, the little lanyard, it says DC out, DC in. Not sure what you would use that for specifically. You also have this threaded part right here, and that allows you to mount it however you like on the side. So you can mount this on the side as well, which is kind of cool. It'd be good for like a boom mounting position or a boom mounting situation. Down here, the feet fold in, so this turns into a handle. It's just an extension of your handle at that point, just like that. And then when you want to use it as a stand, you just pull these feet out just like that, and it sits down. Now this does screw on. So this is screwing on here underneath, which means you can mount this thing to a tripod if you like. So I'm going to show you kind of how the strap works. I don't really want to get it out of its holder. They tell you not to pull this out while it's on. Now in order to turn it on and off, we have our button right here. This also allows us to take a photo or to record if you like, but we're just going to push this button and hold it down. There is a Bluetooth indicator here that I could show you, and that allows it to pair to the top part of the stand. So you want to make sure that's on. You have some lights on the side that tells you the state of charge, and these are by the quarter. So you got 25%, 50%, 75%, and fully charged. Once the lights go out, it's off, and then we can remove it from its harness. You can see how that's just floppy around. And so this red part right here stretches. This comes out. You pull it out like that. See how that's stretchy just like that? And so this folds back, okay? And then the GoPro comes out of the holder. Now you can see that there's some rubber inside of here. And that rubber inside of there is going to do a good job of keeping the GoPro from moving around. There's also a nice piece of rubber right here to keep the front of it stable. Now, like I said, this is spring loaded right there. So you can see how that it's a little bit difficult, but you can see how that pulls in and out. 
But the other cool part is that this side is as well. So see how that moves? That moves up and down. So that is also loaded. So when you go to load this thing inside of here like this, it's real easy. It kind of fits right in. You just fold this over top of it. You bring this down and stretch it out. You bring it down and it clips in. You can hear it click. And now you know that it's good to go. In order to turn it back on, we have to fold this button down again. The green lights are going to come on and it's going to start to rotate. Now when you do this for the very first time, which we're already obviously beyond that, you have to make sure you click this pairing button up on top here. So this pairing button and then it's going to pair and the Bluetooth light is going to come on on there and then you know that it's good to go. Now many of you might use the GoPro Quick app. I really like that app, but this seems to have its own app and it's called Hohem. So I'm going to pull that up so you guys can take a look and see what it looks like. It's H-O-H-E-M. You can download it from the App Store, the Google Play Store. And when I rotate, so when I pull down on this, you can see that the, the GoPro shoots up. And I go up and it goes down, so it's inverse. That's because the way that the display is right now on the GoPro, you can see, is it's facing up, which is cool. And this shows you the percentage of roll that you have, how much pan, how much tilt. Um, all that cool stuff. So right here is our shutter button. We can press that shutter button. We have a motion lapse. If we hit recenter, it's going to go right back to where it's supposed to be. And then you have your photo or video mode. You can change it there. We have point of view, all lock, pan and tilt follow, and pan follow. It tells us the state of battery right there as well, which is kind of cool. So this app is all right. I wish that uh, there was some kind of like incorporation with GoPro to where you had the actual display on here. Because one of my favorite things about the GoPro app itself is the fact that you can see what's on the GoPro. So if we go to the GoPro app, which is called GoPro Quick, you can see that my GoPro shows up there. It's the Hero 8 Black. And if I click on this Enable Preview button, it's going to start a preview to show me what is actually on the GoPro. I just join the network, and uh, it's going to start a preview. You've got to have a decent connection for this. It's showing a low-resolution res version right now, and that's good because we don't want it to take up too much bandwidth just to show a preview. But it lets you see the position that your GoPro is in. Now, I thought to myself, well, if you use this app and then you use this app, can they work together? And the problem is, is since they both require Bluetooth, that one becomes unpaired, but it will pair back up. See, it comes back. It just takes a minute. So if you want to do something like that, you're going to have to position this, scroll back over to your GoPro app, and then look and see what it's looking at. And then you're going to have to go back to this. You're going to have to reposition your camera, and it's inverse, and I still keep screwing that up. It's like a pilot stick. And then you go back and you look and you can see where it's pointing. So not all bad. I mean, it's kind of cool that you can, but I, I think that they could have incorporated this maybe with GoPro. Maybe they wouldn't let them. I'm not exactly sure, but the GoPro app is awesome. So I'm going to want to use that. But I do like the fact that I can still control it. So I just got to go back and forth a little bit to make that happen. It's not that big of a deal to me. It's cool that we have that feature, right? So it's cool that we have the ability to do it. And I'm glad that they made an app, regardless of if it's an app that, uh, that isn't perfect or that doesn't incorporate with GoPro, there is an app. And you can see how it's, it's pretty responsive, right? So there's left, there's right. You go back and forth. If you want to reposition it, you know, you want to point down, you're looking at something on the table. The pan and follow works, the pan tilt and follow works, and the all lock works. Uh, point of view works. It all seems to work pretty good. I don't see any major issues there with that at all. Now, if you look here, when I move it around, you can see just how steady this thing is. It's staying in track, in alignment. It's not uh, having any problems whatsoever there. So I think that's pretty cool. Overall, what do I think? I think it does a great job. Uh, the battery is a concern of mine just because I think if it's charging the GoPro and it's using this, this thing's very light. So I wouldn't think that there's a, a whole lot of battery in this stick, but maybe there is. We're going to have to uh, use it for a little while and then show you because we like to give you real world results. We don't want to just tell you what they say about it. Effectively, for the price, it's definitely worth having. I think anybody that has a GoPro understands how high quality of shots you can get out of these things. 
So they don't just have to be used for um, sports or action or adventure things. For the price of a GoPro, um, they are well worth their quality. And they're up to the GoPro Hero 11 or 12 now. So they've come a long way. This is the Hero 8 and I'm still using it. And it takes great quality shots. You've probably seen some of its shots in, in my videos. If you guys have watched my scooter video, I most certainly use this uh, to take some of those shots. And you can buy all kinds of cool adapters for GoPros and things like that. So if you guys have a GoPro or if you don't and you're considering getting one, I would highly recommend getting this gimbal along with it because it will... Bring other aspects into your shooting, give you some other things you can do with, uh, with the GoPro itself. Other than that, guys, I'll leave a price and description down below so you'll be able to click on that and get your very own. Please consider subscribing to the channel. There's a lot of people that watch these videos that don't subscribe. It will help us get our videos out there to other people that like these videos. In turn, it'll allow us to keep making videos for you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.